Hey. <laughs> Why are you always like, when we start, it's like you're laughing at something or someone? At myself for doing it again. <laughs> oh, wow. For doing a YouTube video again. Yes. Wow. Well, we see, see you, you guys. Anyway, <sighs> welcome to another video right here on our channel. It's me plus you, it's us. And uh, today we're talking about something. Uh... Maybe we should introduce ourselves first. Who are you? Oh, my name is Kwame. Um, I'm a filmmaker and uh, voice actor. And this is... Hi, my name is Elaine. I am part-time YouTube, part-time business developer. And we both, or we live together in our craft. Yeah, and we document bits and pieces of our experiences in conversation like this one you're watching now. So this is what most of our videos are like. But sometimes we do something different yeah. whenever we can. So today I came up with a topic because I thought it would be interesting or yeah, I think it's just good to talk about our insecurities as well and how they shape us. Um, I think we live in a day and age where our parents and there's a lot of fascination about growth and learning and self-development, but I think yeah. it also has kind of a downside. And often when people see us on YouTube, they think we're like so confident and well, people put labels on what we do. Yeah. And they're mostly like, people are amazed, but I think it's also good to acknowledge like there is also things we work on and how has it shaped us throughout our lives. Yeah. So that's why we're here. So basically talking about um, our insecurities, yes. some of our insecurities. And how they shaped us. And how they shaped us. Okay. Or shape us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you going to go first? Or? Yeah, so oh. I thought we could do okay. physical person like your personality and then skills okay so the physical insecurities personality wise and in your skills in as in what you what you do feel like you could do more of or better or anything okay that works okay do you want to go first physical um <laughs> physical the naked truth is it the naked truth Oh, it's good to be vulnerable, but we never... Well, we do vulnerable topics, but this one... So this is more like, which part of my body am I uh, insecure about? Or conscious of, or how you have a story you've needed to <laughs> learn to love it. Um, so I think the part of my body that I think stands out uh, is my nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's my nose. I'm not so... Um, uh, should I say, like, um, negatively, I don't know how to even put it, deeply insecure about it, mm -hmm. but if there was a part of my body that I, I wished was uh, slightly smaller and maybe slender, would be my nose. Um, when I was growing up, um, the, in the part of my body that was generally laughed at was my head, the size of my head. Really? Yeah, the size of my head, because it was not proportionate to the size of at my... At the time? At the time, it was uh, not proportionate. Because you were growing? Yes, it was not proportionate to the size of my body, but my head was big. Uh, I, think, I think it's true, because babies also have a very big head, and then the body kind of... Yeah, but mine was big, big. <laughs> so I even had a nickname, which I'm not going to... I almost mentioned it. No, I'm not going to mention here. But um, now that I'm... probably will comment in the comments on this. <laughs> if they do know it. But now that I'm grown, I think the part of my body that um, gets pointed out often... Uh, is my nose. They, they make reference to a Ghanaian TV personality as my uncle. If you know him, then you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's uh, the physical But one. it's funny because you are insecure about it, but you still decided to take a piercing in it. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm, I'm just living. I mean, what can I do about my nose? Yeah, yeah, but okay, so you learn to love it. Otherwise, you wouldn't put it in yeah, right? I'm learning. you I'm would learning, like yeah. be more like hiding it. Yeah, I'm learning to love it. That's good. Yeah. And what about, because I know you also got a lot, a lot of nicknames about the color of your skin, like the darkness of it. Is oh, that I'm, not, I'm not insecure about the darkness of my skin at all. Mm -hmm. I just dislike the local slang that, I mean, Ghanaians generally describe people by how they look. Mm -hmm, I know. They just make up a nickname and just, you know, I just really dislike hearing blacky. Yeah. But, that, yeah, yeah. that I dislike hearing. Not that I don't like my skin. It's just, it's, what the fuck you mean, Blackie? Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's still 
remarkable people point it out or they used to point it out yeah I mean, people still do. People who don't know your name and are still in that realm of describing you by how you look mm. instead of saying hello. Would I mean, if you go to Cantamanto, so, for example, then what do you say? Uh, if you go to Cantamanto, for example, right now, and somebody wants to get your attention, they'll most likely use the skin color because it stands out than most of the people around in you. Tree? Yeah. Or? No, no, no. They'll, they'll say lucky. They'll call you like that. Yeah. So that was similar to can you compare it to Obruni? Yeah, something Same like that. Thing. Similar. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that is very... We're actually talking about it with our friends from Netherlands the other day that it is... For me, it's remarkable that Ghanaians just call you out on your appearance. Physical appearance. If you're, if you're bigger, then they call you Obolo. Yeah, which in Netherlands, if you would do that, I think people wouldn't like that at all. But yeah. here it's kind of common or maybe people make peace with it i'm not sure yeah mm, okay what about you well <laughs> i think i have a bit more longer list than you i think you have a longer list on the physical yeah oh, okay. i think so for me hmm, i think in the beginning i was insecure about my eyes because they're quite in my whole face <laughs> they are quite small okay and I remember in high school, first class, there was this geography teacher. You know how these things scar you? <laughs> I exactly know the moment. There was this geography teacher, and even reflecting on it with the knowledge I have now, I think it's weird, but he was like talking to me, and then suddenly he said, like, are we talking about my eyes? Or he started talking about my eyes, and then he asked whether I didn't have something Asian in my family. Which I now find problematic in so many ways. Like, yeah, why would you talk to a student about her eyes, like a fourteen-year-old or thirteen-year-old one? Secondly, and then make a stereotypical, stereotypical like reference. My eyes are slanted. Yes, I know, but like, why would you make that reference? So, I think it's also was a weird guy. But funny how I still like carry that around. Yeah. And then I believe I talked to my mom about it. And then she actually said that she also got comments about her eyes because they're also small. Like, so I have her eyes. So she also said that people used to do that to her, which I think is so weird, right? Yeah. That people comment on that. But now I'm okay. I mean, I can't change anything about it, so I'm okay with it. Like, yeah. they they work and they're doing great, so I'm okay. Yeah. I just like to wear a bit of mascara and then. That's I think it. you have beautiful eyes. Thank you. Um, talk to my geography teacher. <laughs> I'll find him. Yeah, I know exactly his face. I'll find him. It's so weird when these things pop up that you can exactly picture the person's face or the situation. Um, I think uh, another one is, well, maybe that one increased when I got to Ghana. So uh, because here in Ghana, you have a different beauty standard for ladies. So uh, in the Netherlands, it's, like the kind of model look like so tall skinny slim i'm and yeah i don't like that standard but you are still influenced by it right by it because you see it everywhere so i think there i fitted in i didn't necessarily love my body like people would comment that it's nice that i'm tall and all these things but but now because i'm in ghana when you switch hmm? when you switch here at ghana yeah, like I feel the beauty standard is curvy and I'm not curvy and people like to point that out <laughs> and they like to say like, oh, the slim this or or you need to gain weight. I get that a lot, like random people t tell me to gain weight. People that are your friends or? No, random people, like when I buy something somewhere or when I'm sitting somewhere. Really? Yeah. Well, I eat a lot for <laughs> why I eat a lot. So this is how my body looks. Yeah. So I've now been starting to just accept that this is how it looks. And I probably won't, will, won't be curvy uh, because, for example, my sisters are a bit more curvy, which I was always like, wow, you know, that's nice. But I'm not so yeah. trying to, to accept that. And then you know, the one more, I, I mean, I have a bit more, but I think let's not put it all out there. Wow. I yeah, that. I think women generally get more criticized for how they look. I know about the eyes, I know about um, the body size, but I didn't know random people would tell you to eat more. 
in Ghana, yeah. Why? I don't know. People think, okay. yeah. These are the moments when I wish I was present. Then we could have it. Sometimes it, it kind of throws me off because I've actually been more conscious of that I should eat. Like I want to eat more regular just because I feel it makes my body feel more at ease. Not necessarily connecting it to weight. Yeah. I just think generally people should not comment on your weight because... Or your body is, in general. Done. Yeah, that's... It's, for me, it's... Some days I don't even hear it and some days it really like throws me off and then I'm angry. Like, why are you commenting on my body? Like yeah. That? But it's fine. Um, yeah, so now I'm more eating regularly and I see it makes my energy more stable. Like, I don't have like... A the fluctuations and the... So for me that moments. works and that's kind of encouraging. And I think last one... <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to say this on YouTube? If you don't want to, don't. No, it's fine. So I have, it's all blonde, but I have quite a lot of face, facial hair. I have. Yeah, but it, that's what you call cilia. It's I not know, hair it's hair. I know, it's small, I know. But I think, for example, for my brother, it's great because he can literally grow his beard. But I do have, like, now I do my eyebrows and everything. I do have, like, thick eyebrows. Like, I have a lot of small blonde hairs around this area. And she knows that this is only invisible. So I am st I'm conscious of it. Okay. So, for example, when I'm in the sun, like, I'm in the sun and I'm talking to some people, I'm like, they're going to see it. <laughs> they're going to ah. see I'm so hairy. <laughs> but I've, I've been trying consciously the last... I think the last year because of course there I mean maybe there's also the Western Beauty Center but there's a lot of focus on no hair right no um, armpit hair um, your eyebrows should be on point no uh, other areas no hair yeah and um, so automatically when you have an issue like that you feel like you have to remove it yeah I've never done that. Even when I go to the spa, sometimes the ladies who work there comment on it, like, wow, you have a lot of hair, should we remove it for you? Yeah. Really? On your face? They do say that? Yeah. Wow, okay. So, for me... You so never tell me these things. Your inkling is, I should remove it. That's what's expected of me, right? That's what society telling you, one way or another. But for me, I've now, the past year, I've been trying to... I mean... I have been made like this by a god or by something. I've been created like this with my hair on my face. Yeah, but... So I should just accept it as it is. Body hair is not weird for women. Some women have chest hair and... What, what, okay, so I'm going to ask this. Um, has it ever bothered you if I notice and it bothers me? Has it ever crossed your mind if you thought it bothered me? Yeah, I do. I do think about it. And what, what conclusion do you come to? Well, I try to tell myself that, I mean, you're not married with me for my looks only. And I think... But that, that doesn't even bother me. I don't even see it. Yeah, but it's not only about you, right? I know. I mean, I think that, yeah, I, I'm trying now, instead of going the route of I should remove these things and... I should wax everything, but that will be half my face, so I also don't know how that works, but you should just accept it. This is how I have been created, and yeah. women have facial hair, women have chest hair, some women are, have like hair on their belly, we should just normalize that instead of forcing somebody to remove her small blonde hairs in her face, just because it doesn't look feminine, whatever feminine is, by that standard. Okay. So... That one is work in progress, but I am aware of it. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I think it's good to share things that you're insecure about so you can grow out of it. And I think everybody has these things, right? Oh, okay. Maybe in that case, small hands. Really? Yeah. Show them. I think my hands are small. Yeah, mine are big. She has bigger hands than I do. Yeah, yeah so... Well, I, what is wrong with... Or is it bad for uh, a man? Or? It's not seen as uh, masculine... It's seen as a less masculine trait. Um, Men have um, so bigger, firmer, usually even more um, tough 
palms. My palms, like my, my hands are soft. Yeah, it's nice. You know, and it's small. Yeah. But I never often like think about it. It's not something until somebody brings it up, I never think about it. They're my hands. I can lift stuff. I'm, like I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah, it's so weird that just because it is, the shape is different or different than whose, uh, that you get insecure about it. It's weird, right? Because it works. We should be grateful that everything works. No? That's it. But you have two hands instead of like, oh, they're small. It's yeah. weird how it works. Anyway. Okay, personality. <sighs> personality. What constitutes personality? Oh, maybe a character trait or... I don't have a lot of patience. I'm, I'm, I think I'm a bit intolerant. I don't know if I'm insecure about it, but it often is the reason for a clash yeah. with people. Mm -hmm. um, there's also um, the anxiety. It's not anxiety in terms of, I don't know how to um, turn off certain things like, okay, certain things I do not like, um, like for example, with time, mm -hmm. so I'm very timely and I don't know how to switch off or relax. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. that's the thing. I don't know how to relax when something needs to be done in a certain way or at a certain time. And since there's also less of a tolerance and more of a quick temper in that sense, especially when you feel the need for the thing to be done and the other person is like chill or doesn't take it as serious mm -hmm. then i don't know how to um, just swallow all those emotions and pretend that it's fine and i should just relax yeah so personality wise yeah there is that um i don't know how to be tolerant of when you know things are not or when we're not on the same wavelength in terms of an activity that needs to be done in a certain way mm. um there's also which one oh i was thinking about it right now and i forgot i can go if you want <laughs> personality yeah. okay you go I'll, I'll think about with the one i was talking thinking about hmm okay i got a lot of comments when i was growing up that i was loud my voice I was always picked out of class because I was loud. And I think in the beginning of our relationship as well, I, I made comments on that, especially when I wanted to gossip with you and I'd whisper something to Elaine like, oh, blah, blah, blah. what? C can you just? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think I toned that down a bit. I mean, I'm still loud. I, I don't think you are anymore. No. But maybe that's not a good thing because people told me I'm loud. I should have just been loud. I just think for women, people always want to make us small. Like don't take up too much space. So in a way, now I'm sad that I let that. Well, I'm loud. Sometimes I get to my loud, loud self. I don't think I don't think you've toned down in terms of the the volume of it you're still very vocal in the things that you yeah I'm are still passionate. Vocal, yeah yes. you're still vocal there's a difference between the 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 volume of the voice versus yeah you um not saying things you want to say anymore yeah, okay. so the volume went down a bit but i think also because at home we were with four kids so you really had to be loud to make your point. Yes. <laughs> okay, that makes so sense. That also comes from there. Did you remember your point? No, because I was talking about yours. I wasn't mm. thinking about that. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, I think I remembered. Um, I think another thing would be. Uh, I don't know if I'm insecure about it. Again, but it's something that. Uh, <laughs> Graham is very confident. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's something that, so it's not, so it's not an insecurity as in I think about it like uh, in such a way that I want, like I feel bad when I think about it, no. But it's more like when it comes to engaging other people in a social um, setting. setting or, you know, collaborative way, then it becomes an issue which needs to be in a way worked on to be able to accommodate other people around you. Yeah. Um, 
I think one of the things is uh, sometimes I'm almost always caught in my own thoughts. Mm. So uh, I come off as not sociable. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Besides the fact that I would generally prefer my own company, which is also um, a bad, not, not a bad, bad thing. But it's, it's, in it's, this day and age, yes. extroverts are very much rewarded. Like the yeah. more you send out, the better. The, the right? better it is. Wow. So I'd rather, I'd rather be by myself or do things my own way or. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's that as aspect as well because again, like you said, it doesn't work for the the current climate of how things are. I mean, your network influences your net worth. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah. So it's, it's something that you have to you know get out of your shell to accommodate other people and be more you know open mm -hmm. and also not only you know. Just open your, if it's, if it's a bubble, don't, don't burst it. If you can open a bit of a hole uh, somewhere, like, yeah. you know, let other, you know, influences in. But I do think that I do pull you out of that a bit. Because I think on your own, you wouldn't really go to some things and then I send it to you and then I push you a little bit to go or we go together. Yeah. Otherwise, you would be home a lot, which is not bad. But I think it's good to practice, right? Yeah. And, and that also makes me... Uh, often want to do things by myself also because of the first thing I talked about that I mean I often don't have the patience to tolerate certain things mm -hmm. to a certain point or to allow things to unveil naturally or yeah you know unravel sorry unravel naturally so mm -hmm. uh, so you're a perfectionist a bit yeah and and a when it's control not control freak yeah. Okay. So that's what we're thinking about. <laughs> and when things are not going uh, the way I expect, I'd rather, you know what, you know, just leave it. I'll do it my way or I'll do it alone or I'll do it by myself, yeah. which is um, not exactly a very positive trait or personality trait to, um, yeah, that's to help you grow. Yeah, that's as well. Yeah. Trusting other people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm also a perfectionist, but I'm not insecure about it. No. <laughs> You're not a perfectionist. I am. You're not. Compared to me, no. You're okay, not. yeah. Maybe there are skills of that. Anyway, let's go to the last one. Skills. Do you want me to go? Yeah, you go skills first. Okay, one that is very deeply rooted. <laughs> I think it is more told to me than I'm really... Okay, maybe... Okay, I don't know. But I'm just going to talk. Uh, it already started in primary school because I think in group four, then you're like... Ten? Mm -hmm. Eight, ten? Nine. Nine. And we were doing math and all these things. And I don't know why they came. The 90s are weird, or that zeros is a weird time. But um, they made groups in class, and then you had the people who were really good in math grouping. And then they made a group. I don't know if they named it like the back group, but the group of people who needed more help, yeah. aka the losers. <laughs> Um, and yeah. I was part of that because I found it really hard and with math, right? Yes. Same for me. And I think that grouping kind of messed with my head ever since because you get that label like, oh, I'm not, not I'm good not enough. good at this. I see, I struggle. I'm not good at this. Instead of going in it blankly and just trying it out, and that also translate maybe i also have less feeling for it or definitely for math but just because it's so like good or bad then you start putting yourself in that box back in that group every time yeah. so t even throughout high school i struggled with uh, economics i struggled with math i needed to get a tutor and all these things and even up to this day i always immediately ask if somebody else can do the math or can do the financial stuff or okay so i'm on the same page with the math and the financial stuff but did you also get these weird groups um it wasn't very uh yeah in in high school there is the, that is done should stop that. Uh, but it's not it's not necessarily um i don't know how to describe it but yeah it, there's some kind of you know those a-listers and then there's the you know yeah. The next and then the next and then yeah, there's that. 
Um, I often often wonder uh, which of the two of us is going to teach the kids math because. I mean, when it comes to English and other, you know... I'm sure we could um, find an auntie or an uncle. Uh, logical reasoning and all those things, you know, science, or things that require that, you know, read and understand. Yeah, but when it comes to calculations and the electiveness of it, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not, no, I don't even yeah. come close to... Okay, I just remember the physical one. You want to... You wanna... Yes. Okay. I sweat easily. You're insecure <laughs> about that? Yes. Especially because like, Ghana is not the worst country, but it's really hot here. So I sweat a lot. And you know, even now, the, the fan is off and the AC is off. I'm really hot. Like, I'm checking if I was... Did you see I was checking? Yeah. If I was not... If it wasn't coming through, through yeah. my shirt. I do that a lot. Even when I buy clothes, I think, will you see? So I don't wear gray because if you sweat in gray, it just, it just immediately becomes, you'll see it. Yeah. And honestly, in Ghana, people like to point out that you are sweating. They like to point things out, generally. <sighs> and it's so like, I know I am sweating. Please stop <laughs> humiliating me. I am aware. So now, uh, luckily, I have face towels and stuff or handkerchiefs that I use. But it makes you so self-conscious because I already feel it dripping like on my back and then you're gonna be like, oh, you're sweating. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm sweating. I know, please stop putting it out. It is yeah. too much. Anyway, do you have one more? I have one more. I think my last one will still be about my nose. It also becomes oily very fast. Oh yeah, yeah. And then it becomes very shiny. So the first thing you see if I'm walking in the sun is just a big nose, which is oily and it's like a, a, a landing pad with a mirror <laughs> but i think people those so i now notice it because you pointed out it's not yeah. only now it's not uh, mm. i just feel like almost every you know few minutes i should just try no, and uh, wipe if i have something just uh, you know uh, yeah. i love your nose i really like it on your face mm. i wouldn't want any other nose thank you <laughs> you haven't seen any other nose all right on your face yes but i've seen other noses i think yeah, this one's pretty fine. cute I really like your face too. Thank you. Even though I'm 40. <laughs> now people are probably going to notice all these small, small, small things. My last one, uh, and Kamu actually contributed to it. What? To the insecurity. Because uh, um, I'm insecure about my dancing. Oh, and that's, that's a skill. It is, yes, it's not it, physical. That's a skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Or you had another skill you wanted to share. No, okay. I just didn't Let's want to with come this with this. Because it's funny. I uh, know. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of rhythm. I think the stereotype of white people not having rhythm is definitely applied to me. Uh, and it's funny because I do like to dance. I do like the joy it sparks. I do is it like, hard in here? <laughs> I do like to, you know, listen to music, sing along, <laughs> dance a little bit, all these things. And especially because you're a foreigner and Ghanaians are big on dancing, people like to invite you to dance. But what I always feel like they expect me to dance really well. And I am not, like, because I don't have rhythm, it looks a bit off, even though I am enjoying it. <laughs> and so I, I did, did do some dance classes because I just wanted to feel more comfortable in my... Uh, skin. So I did so in the Netherlands. I did some African dance classes. That was more from East Africa, which really helped. And here in Ghana, I also have done a, uh, a few classes. Uh, but I get very shy when people kind of put me on the spotlight and I say I should dance. People like. But to that's this. It's a general thing. Unless you're a really good dancer and you really like dancing, but anybody just laugh. on the spot. And they want to film you and stuff, and I get super uncomfortable. Yeah, but that's them not wanting to see you dance and be comfortable. That's them wanting to actually humiliate you. It's not a good thing. Yeah. If somebody asks you to dance, and then don't. they take out their... No, Yeah, don't. so I also don't, but then... Yeah, but it's not like I don't want to dance. I just don't like to be pointed so out So dance when dance. you want to dance. Yeah. Not when somebody says, 
dance let me but see but it's funny because sometimes when you dance because you're a foreigner people are like immediately Ooh! like when you do a few moves and, and i literally freeze like no 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 we're not supposed to look at it <laughs> like yeah. everybody just dance but you will still be sometimes you're still um pointed out like anyway but uh do you want to tell people why you probably contributed to this insecurity I don't want to because I'm done with that chapter. And, uh, it's like years ago. I, Not I, years ago. It's years ago when I said that. It's terrible. And I, I've apologized like 7 billion times. Yeah. But every single chance Elaine gets, she brings it up. It's... Yeah, so it's better to you tell the people. I'm not yes. telling. I'm not telling. So can I tell it then? I made a comment about the dancing, which wasn't supposed to happen, especially coming from me. Who doesn't dance? So he he says he's a bad dancer, which I don't think so. And he said, and for, he doesn't for Ghanaian dance. standards, I suck. Yeah, but it's so weird because why is there a standard for dancing anyway? But Kwame said something like, uh, "You don't want me to say." Mon Dieu, we've even had it in the previous video. Like this is like the third video this is coming up in. Yes, because I'm insecure about it, so oh. you can see how things oh. have its impact. Oh. Word. It's fine. He said I looked, um, <laughs> yeah, how to say it, how to say it nicely, eh? What other word can we use for it? <laughs> <laughs> we can't, because there's no, there's no other way to say it. It's just bad. Yeah, like, I, uh, yeah. Let's just put it like, I look like I'm physically incapable of dancing. Let's put it that way. That's how you put it. Yeah. I think that's the best. The um, way to describe. Politely it. correct way to uh, describe it. I don't remember the scene. I don't remember what I would have been wearing. I just remember the words. <laughs> like, <laughs> going into my heart, like, I will never dance again. That was the immediate conclusion. But of course, haters gonna hate. And I like to dance, so I will keep on continuing to dance. Even though some people think I'm physically incapable of doing it. No, oh, sorry. You, you didn't think I would bring it up? I can't hear it. It's fine. Please, don't <laughs> even like this video. Just subscribe <laughs> if you can. And let's call it a day. But it's fine. No, it's not. Well, we all say things, and I think it's good to talk about these things I'm very sweaty now yeah we're all sweating now it's okay this is the end of the video thank yeah. you for watching <laughs> okay thank you for watching as you can see uh, we do our video we don't plan our videos we and we wanted to share this vulnerable one with you um we are still fine it's just sometimes difficult to talk about these things right yes bye <laughs> <laughs> i'm done <laughs>